Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Train Simulator Classic, aka Railworks. <coughs> Today we're going to be looking at one of uh, DSG DDR's old deer locomotives that got a relatively recent re revamp. He, uh, he went back, touched up some stuff, changed up some of the sounds, physics and such, if I remember correctly. I only changed up some of the sounds and kind of freshened it up a little bit. I don't remember the full list of stuff that he did to it, but for those of you that are just now seeing it, this is one of his older models. Matter of fact, this is probably one of my favorites that he's done so far while normally I'm not personally a fan of the Pennsylvania Railroad. I find their design to be absolutely ugly. As far as Railworks goes, I find this locomotive a real joy to run. Uh, so, uh, a little bit on the history. These are the Pennsylvania Railroad's E6 uh, 442 Atlantics. These were built for high-speed passenger services. Pretty lightweight, but uh, these were, the, I believe, the second largest Atlantic types to ever be built. Uh, second only to the Milwaukee Road's Class A's. And these were, I believe, the Pennsylvania Railroads. While not necessarily the most numerous, these were, I believe, their most popular and most well-received of the 442s. Uh, for what they are, they are a real, real powerhouse, too. Uh, normally, for... A, by the time these locomotives came out, four-wheel driving, four, four-wheel, four-drivered locomotives, I'll get it right eventually, but four-wheel drivered locomotives typically were obsolete. Uh, with only four driving, driving wheels, there's really not a lot of traffic of effort, and by the time these locomotives were built, passenger services had really picked up across the United States, and these locomotives actually were replaced on most major passenger services by the K4s pretty early on, but these locomotives performed so well that the Pennsylvania still kept them in active service right up until the end of steam on some of the lesser uh, some of the lesser trains and commuter services and lightweight high speed trains of sorts. Uh, but one of the things that makes this locomotive probably the most famous is its race. So uh, today only one of these locomotives is preserved and that locomotive has a nickname called the Lindbergh Special. The Lindbergh, it, uh, so for those of you aviation nerds, the uh, Number 460, which we have sitting right here, was used by the Pennsylvania Railroad shortly after Charles Lindbergh made his famous flight across the Atlantic. Uh, there was a race to publish photos and stories and you know anything and everything everybody could get out about Charles Lindbergh and his flight. And uh, one company contracted in the Pennsylvania Railroad to take their film reels by train while another I believe actually Charles Lindbergh himself flew but uh, another uh, contracted a plane and the train and the plane raced to uh, race to their destinations to unload their film reels to publish the stories and the train won by a uh, not a massive lead, but a pretty hefty lead, because uh, unlike on an airplane, you could process your film reels on the train. And I believe the train only carried two or three cars total, so not much weight to it. These locomotives would pick up and fly with that. So, uh, yeah, that's... It's where the, these kind of get their little bit of a famous heritage behind them. Matter of fact, that is why one of these locomotives is preserved, number 460. Now, if I remember the story right, the locomotive actually 
preserved at the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum. The E6 that is there is not the original 460. The original 460, I believe, was scrapped and a new number was made, a new number plate and such was made for the E6 that the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum got. And it was dressed up as number 460. And if I remember the story right, the original number 460 is technically scrapped, but we do have one of these preserved. It is not operational. It sits inside the building at the Pennsylvania Railroad Museum. Actually, to my knowledge, there are no American 442s in operation at all. But, uh... <laughs> it is beautifully rendered in Train Simulator Classic. And in the pack, it is a freeware pack, as are all of DSG's products. They're all freeware, and I highly recommend checking all of them out. I will get to videos on them all as soon as I can, but you will get two. You'll get a clean, which we have with 460 here, and we'll oogie boogie over here, and you'll get a weathered, which kind of shows a little bit of an age. You know, it's got some rust spots on it. It's a little dusty. A little dirty. Uh, interesting. The shadow likes to pop in and out. Huh? Oh well. That's what I was noticing earlier. There's no real differences between the two. They're the same locomotive, just a weathered variant. Weathered variants, mostly just you know, the rust spots, the coal dust. Showing it's Showing like it's got some use out of it. And his weathering's not too, too terrible. I would be a liar if I said I'm fond of it, though. I love his models, but the weathering, it... It's not horrible, but it's definitely not my favorite. It's a little too... Photoshoppy looking. Spurt, spurt, spurt. Now, I, the rust effects actually kind of look cool, especially for like a locomotive that, say, has sat in a museum outside for a while. It looks like, you know, the paint's flaked off and rust spots have formed, but for a locomotive in operation, I'm not too sold on the weathering. So I tend to stick to the clean, to be honest, which is what we'll be using today. <coughs> now when these were built the Pennsylvania Railroad actually opted not to include a lot of the modern features that most of their other new built locomotives included at this point so these are actually still hand fired A lot of uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad's locomotive by this point were using a mechanical stoker, but these are actually still hand fired, which is kind of odd because on one hand these locomotives were built to the newest specifications for an Atlantic type, but on the other hand they still retained some very old features. So it's kind of odd that they shot for that, but it is what it is. As is typical, high quality texturing overall really looks quite nice nice detail especially up close these aren't just flat rivets photoshop texture rivets nice coloring overall nothing is really out of place it really does look quite nice Number plate looks alright. Whenever you get up on it, you can see that it's a flat texture rather than a uh, an actual object. Which I'd be a liar if I said Machine Rail hasn't kind of spoiled me a little a little bit there. Like I said, these are older models. Uh, matter of fact, I believe Machine Rail wasn't putting out many of the uh, 
the American products that they have now whenever this locomotive was first released if I remember correctly they were still pretty geared towards South American content but still not too bad I actually like this number board better than I do the uh, the one on the S1 I think this looks cleaner and then the, uh, the number plate here it looks pretty decent pretty decent overall The smoke isn't mm, horrible. The steam effect is better than the smoke. The smoke, you can kind of see the... Uh, I don't know how you, what you describe it. It looks like Photoshop splotches. And then those splotches just kind of multiply and merge. Kind of s rotate, but there's still the splotches. I'm not sold on it. It's not something that you'll highly notice. Especially if you run from the cab more often than not, like I do. But, uh... Oh, it's still not where I want it. One thing I do have to recommend whenever you run this locomotive, if you try to run it without the F4 HUD, when you first load into the game, pick your locomotive, immediately open your firebox. So push the fire box button and then you will start uh, shoveling coal and then you can close it yourself and he'll stop. Sh there we go. And then he'll stop on his own like that. Because if you just do it this way it won't, uh, it won't register that you're trying to shovel coal in there so it like won't have a coal shoveling rate it'll just open the firebox which it's a little annoying but it's not a huge annoyance like I said you just load in open your firebox immediately from the F4 HUD most things are touchable they sound pretty good we have our little windbreaker here. I believe you also have the option with these to either A, open, yeah, the little tab window here, or open the whole door. <coughs> now the windows aren't too terrible. They're a little bit yellowed. They kind of have a, hell, a yellow hue to them, which, eh, not too big of an issue. I normally run with the windows open, so. It being cold today, I don't think we're, uh, I don't think we need these open. I believe you can also open. Now, it, it does have a pretty decent sound to opening this roof hatch here but it doesn't have it for all the little notches here which it should but I'm not too heartbroken on it not too bad oh interesting hmm. I can open these little back windows here I believe you can open these little windows up here. And then we got our tender classification lights, locomotive class lights. Now there's two classification lights, which is for the tender, which I find kind of odd. Class lights. Now he's definitely got one of the best class light looks overall no bright hues on there no wild colors it's just kind of a nice or nice red glow turn the uh, the tender class lights ah. we don't get tender class lights oh well okay let's see this should be a little exterior light right Boink. Right there. I 
Now I will say if you're not on the horseshoe curve, if you're on one of the more newer routes that's a little better detailed, uh, if you go to turn it on all the external lights and whatnot on this locomotive, it will take a massive hit on your frames. But we're on the horseshoe curve and horseshoe curve is dated to say the least. <laughs> So, most people's computer will run horseshoe curve like it's nothing. So, you do have external uh, and oogie boogie over here. We have cabin light. Looks quite nice. We have our glass lights. Just be right there. And then I believe that's the extent of our lighting. And of course we got our headlights too, which is so right there should be low. Or nah maybe the tie. They don't look too bad. Again, not a big fan of the flares. Uh I think it just it looks too much like you're looking at it through a camera. But uh I like the color as is proper on a steam locomotive. They're yellowed, not neon white. Uh oh. Is that our Oh, there's a headlight. So, you do have in-cab signaling, which does work with the uh, horseshoe curb. Quite nice. Get out the window here, see? Boom, boom. Uses Pennsylvania Railroad style uh, signaling. Now, I do like that he includes these views. So, you don't have to go back to your F4 HUD to... Uh, or you don't have to use a keybind to you to hang your head out the window. It actually is part of the cab view as you switch through your views. I love that. I absolutely adore that. Go ahead. Build our fire up some more. Now just about all of this stuff can be fiddled with. So like we got our live injectors stack blower firebox door valve firebox door for the uh, the stoker down here or firebox doors here actually when I think about it that might be your stoking lever for like getting the fireman to actually shovel so you might not have to use the F4 HUD some locomotives they do I know sanders turn your sanders on hop outside see if it dumps sand which you do. You do indeed. Sanders on the front axles. Right there. Bang. Turn those off. Should be our bell valve, which we have on both sides, which is kind of... I still find that highly entertaining. Cylinder cocks. We're going to want those open before we take away. Or a reverser. Train and locomotive brakes. Well, we are going to set the locomotive brake though. So that uh, we don't roll away here. We'll just release the train brakes. up to running there. Start for shoveling. Sorry, uh, feed regulating valves up here. We got our live injectors, our dynamo, other live injector, water glass top off, surface blowdown, Water glass, water glass, decos, our fireman's bell, 
steam heating. Which actually we might want that on. We got some coaches here. Live injector. Air compressor. That's something important. <laughs> These should be our oiler. Which you can fiddle with everything on them. Uh, they're not quite to the uh, level of complication that uh, like a New Zealand train works do with their uh, their JA and their latest KB. It's not quite to that level of uh, simulation, but you can fiddle with them. You can adjust your uh, your oil regulator up here. It's just quite nice, especially for a locomotive this old. I say old. It's not the oldest that he's done, but it's definitely older. Uh, it just had a more recent rework than his other stuff has had. So lots to fiddle with in here. Let's listen to the bell. Do have an operating bell, which is steam operated. So you know, a little steam valve over here. So no rope going to the cab. Sounds quite nice. I don't believe there's any sound occlusion, but not such an issue with all the uh, windows being open. Whistle. Not too bad. Not too shabby. I actually do like the bell. I do like the whistle overall. It's not too bad. I think the uh, the beginning. There's no real beginning start up to the whistle, but overall it sounds pretty good. So, pretty nice, pretty nice. I do like it. Let's uh, open our throttle so that our uh, cylinder cocks will start popping off there. Cut off our uh, locomotive brakes. And let's go here and check our uh, switches so that we don't run out into anything that we don't want to. Now it definitely takes a little bit to get these locomotives to walk away. Like I said, these are these are not powerhouse locomotives. Well, they they are and they aren't. So you might need some sand to get going. But you can actually spin the wheels, which is interesting. And that lever and that lever for your injector over there on the fireman's side. Now, once you get these locomotives running, it doesn't take a whole lot to keep them running. In my experience, these things roll really well, really nicely, and they'll hold 70 miles an hour all day. Like, I know they're way out of place, but I actually really enjoy throwing this down on like a home pass since it's a wide open stretch and just let it run. It's really easy to just let it go. Because, uh, it takes a minute for it to walk off with its train, but once it does, it it, it really rolls. <laughs> really rolls. And normally on a level, on a level ground, you can pretty well walk away with about six, six cars or so. 
So I normally pair this thing up with the, uh, well, obviously the P70s, and then uh, I know the Centipede Pack's got a baggage car and a diner. I normally pair it up with a combo of those cars. And it typically rolls around pretty well with them. Chef sounds are pretty nice overall. Start cutting back on our reverser. Slowly but surely. It also doesn't help that we're out here in the snow, so traction is uh, laughably non existent. And I believe Altoona Station sits at an incline, if I remember right. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Which kind of makes for a pain in the rear for starting up the hill here. Especially with these, uh, with the K4s, for anybody that still runs these K4s on the rare occasion, <laughs> these things do not walk away with anything on a hill. They need a, uh, they need a physics rework really, really bad. Yeah, we're starting to gain some momentum now. Oh yeah, I forgot this feature. A water scoop. So I can raise and lower the water scoop. Now unfortunately, the water scoop is not functional in Train Simulator. We don't have that added in anywhere. But you can kind of see it there. It's a little bit dark. But that right there is your water scoop. And that lever there is what picks it up and down. So that's a neat little addition. In my opinion, anyway, it's a really neat addition. Brake sounds are pretty nice. Not too bad. However, because I don't have all day, I am just to demonstrate its at speed sounds. I am going to dump these cars for uh, the giggles and the squiggles. I do believe the Johnson bar translates outside. Yeah, the lever here does. I don't... Yeah, you can just see it. I 
I don't believe it actually pulls the eccentric crank here up. Or, not our eccentric, but... Let's stick our reverser right there at about 30. That ought to be good for us now. And we we'll leave, we can cut our sand. So it does sound really nice. Steam usage rate is laughably higher than our steam generation rate right now. It's fine. Chuff sounds are quite nice. I believe you can hear the whistle pretty decent ways away too. Which is really nice. All too often the whistle sounds, they just... They never... Very far... You get out to... Well, couple hundred meters away from the locomotive and sometimes the sounds are just non-existent. It's kind of entertaining. My shadow is uh, high quality here and it just kind of blurs away. It's entertaining. Really nicely done. Really nicely done locomotive. If you haven't checked them out already, you can pick, as I said, these are free. Free wear. You ain't gotta pay not a single penny for them. Uh, I know you used to... Back, I, I don't know if you still have to. I know back in the day you used to have to have the, uh, the K4 pack because his uh, engineer and fireman came from the K4 pack but I don't know if that's still the case but these are still very much freeware these are available from his website I just did a, did a video on the S1 come from the same guy so I do highly recommend going and checking them out I think you'll like it Especially if you're a Pennsylvania Railroad fan. These fit in probably a lot. These will fit in a lot more than the S1 does on most of your routes. So obviously the horseshoe curve. This will fit in pretty well. Uh, these were pretty popular on different portions of the Northeast Corridor routes. These would have been used as uh, commuter servicers there. Uh, so yeah. I do highly recommend going and checking them out.
Yeah, that's about all there is that I can say to them, though. There's not much left. Not much else I know to say, so. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys next time.